Hello and welcome. I am Scarpalock, and this is City of Villains on the Rebirth server. We are with Nightmare Lass, our level 34, nearly level 35 mastermind, who has 3 million XP earned, 23,000 to go to get to the next level, and 139 million infamy. And we are working on a story arc for Vivacious Verandi, who says, Fun, 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 Nightmare Lass. We are quite a pair. We've already created a war between the family of the Freak Show. Now it's time to expand. I want you to head out to the streets and take some Devouring Earth. So now I have to look for some Devouring Earth. And the mission should tell us where. Hanging around the flop. Which is over there. So let's head over and we will find them. It looks like we only need 10. Hopefully this won't be one of these missions where you def need to feed 10 and then 20 and then 30 and then 40. Um, but we'll see what we can do about grabbing some Devouring Earth. And I wonder if there are any down here. There's woods and stuff down here. Uh, let's turn invisible. Don't feel like aggering by accident. Nope, nobody down here at all. You'd think the Devouring Earth would be found down here, but I guess not. Boy, they really like doing these closed-in canopies in this game. I think the developers just like mazes. So this is Jackpot, but we want to head over to the flop. And I have to say that as cool as the Halloween events sometimes can be, I'm really sick of it being dark all the time when you log into this game. I, I think that's actually a really bad design choice. It shouldn't be like that all the time. I can see them like making the day longer than the night, but it should be day sometimes. It's just just annoying to always have it be so dark on the screen, you know. And City of Heroes does pretty well with the dark versus the light most of the time. Um, and I haven't seen a single mob spawn anywhere. Are we having server issues? And there's literally nothing anywhere. I'm not seeing any mobs at all. I wonder if we're bugged, guys. Maybe the server just restarted. It is a Monday. Maybe they, they just restarted the server. It shouldn't be nobody. I don't see a single NPC anywhere. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay, there's a giant monster furbolg. Alright, and there are some minions from the Unseely Court. Maybe he's, like, wiped everybody else out over here because this event is going on, maybe? Okay, there are some mobs, at least. We weren't seeing any of them anywhere else, but I don't see any Devouring Earth, and this is why I don't like these missions. Because you could literally spend hours and hours and hours flying around this place and never see anything. Look at this. There's not a single enemy anywhere. Now I feel like I'm getting some lag a little bit. There are NPCs, but no bad guys, no targets. And you know, I don't know these zones at all, because I've only ever been in this zone maybe once in my life, you know, in, back in 2005, so I don't even know where to find stuff. And I don't know where you would typically find them, but I'm not getting I mean, I am tabbing non-stop, and I am not getting anything. So I'm going to pause it here, and I'll keep looking around and see what the heck is going on, and I'll bring you back. All right, guys, well, I've been all over this zone. Um, I also went south over here. There definitely are mobs, just not in this section of this island. There's just nothing. So I'm going to just complete this. So the way you do this is you call your contact and just say complete the mission, and yeah, go ahead. So it's automatically completed. I mean, I don't know what to do. There aren't any enemies at all. There are no mobs here. So it's bugged, clearly. So that's there to deal with bugs. Takes care of it. Hopefully we won't find another bug mission. So Devouring Earth are beside themselves. My plan is coming to fruition. Here have some enhancements. These story arcs are just so bare. We started a war between the Family Freak Show. We've got the Devouring Earth stirred up. But there's still more mischief. Go to the Circle of Storms. I want you to steal a magic weapon from one of their lairs. 
Okay, I'm going to try going in with just three accuracies. We'll see what happens. I may regret this. But, um... Yeah, at one point I thought, well, am I not able to target, to tab target, because I was invisible? Um, but I, I don't know if these guys, the Furbolgs spawning, are causing the other Devouring Earth, like, not to be here. I just have no idea. This section doesn't have anything in it either, so I don't know what's going on. But I have no patience for this kind of silliness. Just to defeat 10 Devouring Earth, I'm not going to take 20 minutes to do that. That's just ridiculous. It's a crap mission anyway. I always hated those missions. And so, yeah. I don't like for only defeat 10, wasting a complete like that. Because then if we get a bug mission now or sometime in the next three days, I can't. I can't auto-complete it because I wasted it on a defeat 10. And 10 doesn't take that long to do. But if you can't actually find any of them because the whole zone is empty, then I don't know what you're supposed to do about that other than just auto-complete it. Alright, so these are just spectral demons, so we'll just go ahead and attack them. These guys are not a problem. The problem for us um, is the behemoths, and especially the behemoth master lieutenants. When they turn on their invincibility, they become unhittable. But I'm going to continue trying my strategy that didn't quite work the last time because our guys didn't follow my order. But I'm going to try the strategy of attack the behemoth first, just like attack the demon first, the spectral demon first. Um, because the idea is that hopefully Curly freezes them like that, and then they can't turn on their invincibility. So we need to steal a magic weapon, which I guess we're going to try to blame the Devouring Earth for. Apparently, the Circle of Thorns won't notice that I'm the one doing it. I don't know. I, I think this story arc is really lame. Here, just go cause a bunch of mayhem by by clicking on Glowies. There's, there's no real narrative to it. Look how short it is. We're five missions in or something, and it's this short. Does not compare favorably, in my view, to the City of Heroes side. And now I'm on a minus fly, minus jump, minus defense, ultra slow, earth patch. Alright, now we're out of it. And using some metagaming dungeon logic, we are going to head south. My logic is always further in is where you're going to find the target. Now theoretically, west could have been further in, but I'm just playing the odds here. And I don't want my guys to fall off the bridge, so we're going to teleport these guys in. And that pulled the rest, and I'm perfectly happy for that pull because it means that they're off the bridge. And then my guys can take care of them without falling. Because the real issue with their minions when you're going onto narrow walkways like this, the real issue is just are they going to fall down and aggro something underneath. So I'm going to stop them right here. I don't see anything underneath there, so we're going to push them over and hopefully they'll all go. And it looks like we just go through. Follow me. See if they come. Yep, they came through. I don't see any behemoths, so we'll just attack. You know, it's really interesting. I've been watching a Let's Play of someone who did, who's doing um, a franchise mode of Planet Zoo, which is uh, it's a pretty nice playthrough. I've watched, I don't know, eight or nine episodes. Um, he does much longer episodes than I do. Most of his episodes are about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. 
And uh, that was a behemoth, and I wouldn't even pay attention. Speaking of that, uh, the reason I mention him is because he said pretty much the same thing that I've said. Uh, several people have left him comments that were perhaps a little critical, saying, you missed this, you missed that, you didn't notice this, you're doing this wrong. And he pointed out the same thing that I have pointed out before, which is it's a lot easier to watch somebody play than to actually play and narrate what you're doing. And um, you're, it splits your attention. I mean, I am watching what I'm doing, but I'm also trying to narrate and think about what I'm saying. And it definitely does split your attention. And the attention splitting is why you end up screwing up or not noticing details. Plenty of times I've watched my playthrough afterwards and gone, oh, that's why that, you know, I can't find this thing. Where is it? I'm like, the glowy's right over there. How did you not see it? Well, I, I was busy talking. Um, and so he noticed the same exact thing. And so, so just so that everybody who's listening understands, it is harder to do this and talk. And um, it's distracting to do the talking. I enjoy it. I like it. But, um, and there's another behemoth that I didn't notice. So I'm not doing a very good job of attacking the behemoths up front, am I? Again, because I'm talking and being inobservant. So I enjoy doing the talking. Oh, this is an overlord. He's no problem. They, they can't turn on invincibility. Um, I enjoy doing the talking. I get kind of bored when I play and I don't speak. Because I'm so used to it now. But... It definitely does divide our attention. And we are level 35, which means we get our next power, which apparently is not a toggle, but is a click power, according to Kiovar. So thanks for that information. Click powers are way better than toggles. I don't like running toggles if I can avoid it with this character, because she doesn't... Um, because in terms of the endurance... Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because she doesn't actually do a lot other than heals. But, um... But I also don't have a lot of endurance reducers on her powers either. So, oh, I hear a glowy. Alright, so you guys stay back here for a sec. Let's, let me just scalp the room. There. And it looks like we aggroed. Did we? And why are you... Oh, they're white cons because I just leveled. Yeah, it looks like one of my guys went through the door while I was trying to negotiate where I wanted to send them. But since these are white cons, who cares? Whatever. They can't do anything to me. There's the glowy. Yeah, our guys are going to have trouble hitting the white cons, uh, the uh, earthhorn casters as well, just because uh, they also have high defense just nothing we can do about that. And we'll click on the glowy while the, my guys are finishing up. So steel magical weapons. We got one clue. There must be another clue. glowy. Oh, there it is. Get out of my way, guys. There we go. And that didn't get me anything, so there must be another glowy up here, I guess. So this is an explore the whole base mission. I assumed I was just going to find one cache of magical, bleh, magical weapons, but clearly that's not true. Oh, and now we're being ambushed. So this is going to be, the, I guess this is the same basic model as the family mission, where as you click on glowies, you get ambushed. Um, I guess, I think that's another one of the issues that I have. Although there were a few story arcs that were like this with, uh, in City of Heroes, I feel like these missions, it's doing a lot of copy-pasting, you know? I mean, they, they come up with a mission here, go steal some go steal some treasures and plant them on somebody else and then they just sort of copy and paste that mission design click glowies get ambushed click glowies get ambushed click glowies get ambushed onto like mission after mission and all they do is just change which mob it is here we go same business right start with the behemoth master freeze him that's what I like finally got it to work the way I've been picturing 
And there's another ambush. So now it's just endure the ambushes. They're not enough to really stop us or hurt us. Oh, we're maxed out on salvage. Stay with me, guys. I know one of them ran away, but I don't care. There he is. I knew he would come back. These guys were yellow or orange cons, this might be more challenging, but with white cons it's just super easy. Alright, let's go back. Why can I not get through this portal? Come on. So now we just have to go all the way up. How did they end up over here? Oh, these portals are random. What a pain in the neck. Which means who knows where the heck my minions ended up. So I may just have to resummon them. Let's see if they're... Look at... He just... They just summoned right out of the floor. Can the rest of them come here? Yep, they're all here, I guess. Curly, yep. Curly. Miney, Meeny, Eeny, Larry, and Mo. Okay, everybody's here. Let's go. I hear another glowy. Oh, is this going to be one of these awful portal sections? Yep. Oh man, guys. Alright. I'm going to de-summon all of you. Go invisible. I do not want to aggro all these portals. I just want to find the glowy. Sounded like it was over here. There it is. I'm just not interested in fighting this whole room full of guys in portals. And there's the last one. Yes, yeah, so if you get too close to those portals, a bunch of demons come out. I'm really not in the mood for that. Alright, we're done. Let's head out. I mean, I wouldn't mind taking on one or two portals, but there are a lot of them, and they come out endlessly. All right, so let's call our contact. And she says, goody, goody, with these mystic weapons, we'll be able to make headlines. And then she says, you know the scene. We've got the magical weapon stolen from the circle. Now we've got to fob that theft off on the Sioux. See if we can cause a little more chaos this time. So plant a, the weapons in a Sioux base. And what are the odds that they are going to come and ambush me in the Tsu base? I'm going to just teleport there. And they'll be screaming, kill the Tsu, kill the Tsu, and attacking me. Um, Kiavar made the comment, well, you know, they think you're involved. Well, then say kill Nightmare Lass. Kill Nightmare Lass. She's working with the freaks in the word balloon. Not kill the freaks, kill the freaks, and then shoot Nightmare Lass. That just doesn't even make any sense. It, it's sloppy. And it just smacks of a rush design, people slapping prepackaged modular elements like the ambush module into a story arc and not even editing the uh, dialogue, right? And it doesn't even make any sense what they're saying and doing. There should be a logic to it. it and I think the way to describe it is it's just very immersion destroying. It's immersion breaking. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this particular story arc. But you see here why I, did, I only played the villain side once. Because I didn't really enjoy 
the villain storylines, particularly after about 20th level. The early ones are okay, but the higher level ones I don't really like. So we'll go through this once, and then I'm going back to City of Heroes. I do love the Mastermind. I will say that. I absolutely love this archetype. It's super cool. So four weapon... Four weapons to plant. Who did I miss? Are we being ambushed? Or did I miss somebody? I just missed these guys, I guess. They must have been hiding in this little hole. Because the ambush is not going to come from the Sioux. It's going to come from the Circle of Thorns. Right? They're not. The Sioux aren't going to ambush us because they're the ones I'm trying to frame. So we're in their hideout. They're not going to ambush us. And we got to level up, too. As soon as we're done, I will do that. I should have done that before. I forgot. <laughs> I guess we have time. We've only, we're only about 20 minutes into this video. I hear a glowy. So this will probably trigger the first ambush. But you see how that's potentially an issue. I already, even though I haven't played this mission before, or if I have, it's been 15 years since I have. I already know, once I click this glowy, if it'll let me, there we go, I'm going to get ambushed. I know by whom, the Circle of Thorns. By the way, why did we, there they are, and they just spawned. Now look at this. Somebody said, Kiyavar said, oh, well, there are doors. No, there are no doors here. These are blocked off. There's not a single door in this area. They just appeared next to the boxes right here where there are no doors. There are no windows. There is no entrance. There is no egress. They just spawned in midair. And they just spawned again in the middle of my demons. They didn't come from the door. They didn't break through this window. They came in over here. Now, that's just sloppiness. So now we'll just stay here and wait for them to keep respawning. Watch it. It's going to reappear here again, right? Maybe not. Are we done with the ambushes? How did I just suddenly get a recipe? So there. You see how sloppy this is? We're standing right there. And by the way, this, as I said in my comment, is a violation of the original design philosophy of the game. When Statesman designed this thing, and, and the other initial developers, one of their rules was, we're not going to allow spawns to occur in sight of a player. So, if you go out on the street, and you street hunt, and you beat up some bad guys, and you stay right where they were, they will not respawn there. Because they, the developers thought it was immersion-breaking and unrealistic to have enemies just suddenly materialize out of thin air, which... By the way, is what they did in every other MMO when City of Heroes came on the market. You would, they called it camping the spawn point. You would stand at, you would see a monster like a minotaur or whatever in a fantasy game standing here in the, in the wilderness outside under a tree. You would defeat it, and then if you wanted to fight more of them, you would stay right there and wait for it to respawn, to reappear at that exact spot. And they called it camping the spawn point. You would camp out at that spot and wait for the, for it to respawn. And it would suddenly appear out of thin air right in front of you and you could attack it. And people would actually like form queues. They would line up. Right? 
I'm going to st sit at the spawn point. You come. You want to hunt minotaurs too. You know where the spawn point is. You'd stand behind me and wait. And we would. there'd be a line of 20 people all waiting for the minotaur to spawn so they could kill it and get its horn. Or whatever for a quest. And Statesman quite rightly said, That's crap. That's completely unrealistic. You shouldn't be doing that. It's wildly immersion breaking. And we shouldn't have that in a role-playing game and we can do better and so they designed an algorithm outdoors in city of heroes where spawns could not happen within a certain radius of the player so and i mentioned this too when i when i was hunting i think lost with silver phoenix you had to or i was hunting clockworks i think on the rooftops yes i was hunting clockworks on the rooftops in steel canyon and i defeated a bunch of clocks on the top of some shop on the southeast side of steel canyon and I then said, why don't I just wait here and let them respawn on this rooftop? Because if I wait here, they won't respawn on this rooftop. The game makes you leave, right? Because it's unrealistic for enemies to just appear in front of you out of thin air. Yes, some enemies may have a teleport ability, but it is unrealistic for them. Uh, clockworks, level 10 clockworks to just suddenly materialize in front of you. Oh, uh, will you come over here? What are you doing up there? So one of my guys got stuck. You see this? Meanie, go away. Uh, I, I can't. I'll just resummon. Come down here, guys. I hear another glowy. It's not up on top, is it? Oh, here it is. So now we're going to get ambushed again, I would guess. So let's just wait here. I got to re reapply the buffs anyway. So yeah. The rule in City of Heroes and what the developers actually told people, you have to realize that people went into City of Heroes, they're looking for Lost. The Lost were on some street corner in King's Row, and you'd defeat them, and you'd stand on that street corner. You could stand on that street corner for an hour, and they never came back. And people started complaining, your game is bugged. And the developer said, no, it's not. You want to find Lost? Go around the block. And they'll respawn, and by the time you come back around, they'll appear because they won't show up when there are players watching. It's designed that way. And I think it's a shame that the ambushes were just designed to break that. They're, this one isn't so bad because they were coming from around that corner over here. But to have them just appear out of thin air right in front of the player... There's no reason for that. And if they can prevent it from happening out in the wilderness, outside in King's Row, why can't they prevent it from happening inside in a mission? They should be able to. I don't know. What are they saying, anyway? See? That Sue must pay. That Sue must pay. And to make the Tsu pay, what are they doing? They're attacking Nightmare Lass and her demons. Again, doesn't make any sense. So I feel like this mission, as I said, this needed another editing pass. Somebody should have been checking them and going, no, you know, somebody should have gone in and tested. When they went in and tested these missions, somebody said this should have said, this doesn't make any sense. Have the Tsu say that Tsu and their ally, Nightmare Lass, must pay. And then it would make sense they're, they're attacking both me and the Tsu because they think I'm working with the Tsu. But right here, right now, what this dialogue says is just the Tsu must pay. All right, I'll stop harping on it.
Got enhancement. And yeah, nothing we need. Yeah, I was so negligent about noticing I was getting enhancement drops. The last time I sold them, I had three pages. Right? This, this, and most of this were full. That was really funny. I remember way back when I was still on the United, one of the people on that team in the in the supergroup chat said, Oh, holy cow. Um... He, I guess he was on a task force or something, and he hadn't been paying attention. He said, holy cow, I have six pages of enhancements to sell. Okay, so there's another glowy downstairs. I'm going to clean this room up first before we click on any more glowies. Let's get rid of these guys. There haven't been any bosses or leaders at all in these missions. Not even lieutenants in the most, for the most part. A couple of behemoth overlords in the circle mission. I don't... I think there were maybe one or two in the freak show mission. There were a few in the family mission. No bosses. Which is very unusual for story arcs. I wonder where the last glowy is. I probably missed something somewhere. I always do. Alright guys, come with me. Oh, there's two of them here. Okay, there are two of them here. <laughs> One. Oh, they ambushed me right away. And again, here, see? We know there was nobody in here. And then all of a sudden, I click on the glowy, and they're there attacking me. Alright, let me turn on the uh, mez defense. I'm tired of getting mezzed. Attack. Right there. No doors there either, guys. They're just showing up on the platform. Alright. Click on the last glowy. And that's the mission. No, we're not going to fight the ambush. It's silly. That ambush was a, was a waste. I mean, if it's going to end and let you lo like exit the mission, why have an ambush after the mission is over? Um, debt protection. Why do I have debt protection? I didn't die. During this event. Oh, I guess the Halloween event? I suppose. All right. Let's call her. And she says, oh, good. More fighting. You're just the best. And then there's going to be another one. But before we do that, I think we should level up. What do you guys say? So let's level up. Arbiter Hayes is a bit away, so I will... Pause it here, and when I come back, we will be leveling up. All right, guys. Time to train up. Next level. So let's take a look at the detailed info on Anguishing Cry. It is a click power. It lasts 30 seconds. Ah, so you... What? Target is self... 
So this is weird, right? The way it's worded, they should have worded it differently. Um, it takes two minutes to recharge. It lasts 30 seconds. AOE, 25-foot radius, 60, 16 targets max, but it says target type is self, and then it says minus 22% defense and minus 22% resistance on target. Now, what it means is the 16 targets, but it looks like if you target yourself, you're reducing your own defense and your own resistance by 25%, right? It should be on foe. Not on target. Anguishing cry. All right. So that is a click power. All this silliness. Where are we going to put that? This is like these. It's an AOE click. I'm going to have to think about how I use these. This should go here. I hardly ever use these attack powers. Hmm. Look at this. Zombies attacking me at the trainer. Is this ridiculous with these events? This is just the stupidest thing. Why would you uh, program these things to attack somebody at a trainer? That's just ridiculous. I, I don't like this kind of stuff. Honestly, you know, trick or treat is fine, but this kind of garbage, and now you have zombies, spawned zombies, just standing next to a trainer, ready to attack people. I like, it's just unbelievable. I, I just don't, I can't <laughs> with this stuff. I really can't. It's just so, it's such bad design. I, I don't mind zombies popping up in other parts of the map, but not at the trainer. Why isn't there a little computer drone there to zap them at the trainer? Look at this. He's even going to appear on the roof? That's, that's absurd. Un unreal. All right, guys. I'm going to go find somewhere safe to log off. Maybe I'll log off in the base. I'll see you next time. Until then, I am Scrapperlock, and this is City of Villains.